it up, folks. Just a little closer, please. And marvel at the greatest show on earth. You don't have to buy a thing, folks. And I'll meet Princess Laughing Eyes, who will thrill you with her golden voice. <laughs> Lady, notice the whiteness of her skin. And she was born a full-blooded Kickapoo Indian. If you, too, want a complexion of patrician pallor, just take Princess Laughing Eyes' herb compound. Why, it'd make Sitting Bull look like a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and here's Mr. William J. Brady. He's performed before the crowned heads of Europe, Asia, and the South Sea. Step up a little closer, folks. Prepare to be amazed at his death-defying exhibition of revolver marksmanship. Step up, folks. Step up. Up, down, all over the town. Looking for Joe O'Grady. He's about so high and his one good eye finds every bar in the town. Here, there, and most everywhere, they're tracking down Joe O'Grady. When they get poor Joe, you will see him go down to the old county jail. Where is Joe? Where is Joe? Has anyone seen Joe O'Grady? There's a room for him and a boo. How'd you like to have that fella gunning for you? I'd like to have him gunning for some fellas I know. The town needs a man like that for sheriff. When Joe Grady goes out, I love it. This would be a swell spot for him the time I walk over. Listen, you've tried that stunt 50 times. I ain't gonna have you spoiling things now. got old and Joe's getting younger each day. to disreputable characters. Disreputable? Listen, my uncle Marmaduke Blackstone's brand of fish glue is known from one end of the state to the other. Disreputable? Why, you... Oh, we're going to leave this town principal like. You don't mind if we eat our supper first. You've got to get out of here right now. Get packed up and make it quick. Mr. Belden, you and your money will be safe there. Larry. 
the gap. Well, how can they ever get there? And if it's so the knee, I'm rather foolish. But I can still run. Where's the girl? I don't know. I don't know where she went. Come on. Hey, girl! What happened? The sheriff's running us out of town, as usual. Well, get going in a hurry, Gabby. I'll tell you about it later. I'm heading up there. You go on. he's done for. That's one more to chalk up against Ripper. Well, I don't know who you are or who Ripper is, but thanks for that. Don't thank us, stranger. Ripper was after you. That's good enough for us. Every man here was run out of Deadwood by him. That was some mighty fancy shooting you was doing there. Say, uh, ain't you Brett Starr? That's all over. It's Bill Brady now. Well, you look good enough to me, no matter who you are. Clem Littlejohn, that's Andy Baker, and uh, Bert Snell, and Colorado Jack Bring. And the fellow that rode that horse was Matt Bennett. He was sort of the boss, so to speak. Sure a tough losing him. Matt Bennett? You want all the award notices around for? And you have the game to kill my clerk and busted up my store tonight. I know. That can't be. You were here. Then who in front of were those men chasing us? That was Ripper and his gang. We've been getting blamed for everything they do. Matt Bennett was as fine a man as ever lived. Me and him aimed on starting up a liver table down in Deadwood. Until Ripper come along. Well, let's be getting back to camp. Fires feel mighty good about now. Yeah, and a little food. You got food up here, haven't you? Well, the best in the world. All right, a Jack Breen there brought in some venison. I never saw such leather carbon. Someone here do work like that? 
Yeah, Andy there used to run the saddle store in town till Ripper's gang robbed him of his last cent and left him for dead. And all of you were in business in Deadwood? Or trying to get in. Bert Snell, yonder no sooner hit town to start up a restaurant till Ripper cleaned him. Well, how come they can get away with it? Aren't there any good folks in Deadwood? With all these mines booming, no one's got time to look after the other fella. Besides, most of the decent citizens are tenderfeet like me and not much good against a man like Ripper. Say, uh, you know that girl that sent us up here? She sort of saved our bacon. Yeah, uh, Linda Barry. She works at Ted Carver. He runs the newspaper that's trying to clean up this town. Say, uh, how did she come to know about you people? Her dad is my best friend. He got held up and killed last year. He found a secret way in here. Then there's another entrance? Yeah, and it sure comes in handy when the sheriff asks you. Well, we owe her some thanks. I think I'll head down that way tomorrow and deliver them person. You better not, young fella. Likely you won't come back. How does this sound, Linda? The city of Deadwood must realize that it is indeed a city with all the civic responsibilities that this entails. What if we are 200 miles from a railroad? Our mines have brought us wealth, theaters, even a telephone exchange. One of the first of these newfangled contraptions west of the Mississippi River. It's high time we settle down. It's all right as far as it goes. Well, don't think I won't lambaste them about that cold-blooded murder at Seth Belden's store. I'm going to ask where Sheriff Jordan was while that was going on. Makes my blood boil to think you're being endangered by a pack of ruffians like that. Didn't you point out those people at Laramie Gap are being blamed for Ripper's work? I know it was Ripper. I saw him with my own eyes. I know it, Linda, but I can't say it. The minute Ripper finds out I know too much about him, I'm a dead man. What about the Civic League? Can't they do anything? Not until we get a new sheriff and some law in this town. Why, what are you doing here? Well, I just come back to thank you, ma'am. We got away all right. But don't you know that whole gang's out gunning for you? Well, I don't reckon they got too good a look at me. Besides, I bought myself a new shirt and a new hat. Maybe that'll fool them. Do you really think so? I'm afraid you might be out looking for trouble. Not me, ma'am. Anyway, I'd hate to think anybody could keep me from coming to see you. I admire your courage, fellow, but I doubt your wisdom. This is, uh... Bill Brady. Mr. Carter. Howdy. Still, maybe that's what we need in this town. A little more courage and a little less wisdom. Mister, you sure have a pleasant way calling a man crazy. You going out, ma'am? Yes, I'm going to interview Mrs. Green, the postmaster's wife. She's just had twins. Would you mind if I walk away with you? I'd like to find out more about this town. See you again. Now, that's what I call a right fast moving young fella. Yes, isn't he? This coach is covered with iron plates. First one I ever saw like that. Nobody's ever held up that stagecoach yet. And millions of dollars have traveled to the railroad in it. Sure. Right away. Goodbye. Hey, Monty, come in here. What are you doing awake so early? That medicine show fellow's back in town. The one Ripper ran into last night. Where is he? Walking along with the Barrett girl, calm as you please. This town's gonna learn nobody can shoot back at us and get away with it. Take care of them. I'd rather wait and let Ripper handle them. I said take care of them. Sure, boss. Mrs. Green can't see me for a few minutes. I'll have to wait. Well, that's all right. I'll wait with you. They deserve a better town to grow up in. You seem to intend to stay here. Why? Well, for one thing, I like the people. Especially one of them. Besides, business was so good yesterday that I'd like to fix it so we could put a show on here. Anyway, I've been batting around the country so long that I'd kind of like to settle down. Some place like Deadwood. Is there another reason? Those men at the Gap. You'd like to help them, wouldn't you? I know Brett Starr would. What do you know about Brett Starr? Well, I work for a newspaper, and all our news doesn't come from Deadwood. What's that got to do with me? The press service sent us a photograph of Brett Starr. Of course, we weren't equipped to print it. Well, I don't reckon I can out talk a photograph, but I like uh, Bill Brady better. I'd be proud to be Brett Starr. I was born in the West, and I know there can be good reasons for shooting. Maybe. Oh, 
Oh, excuse me, young fellow. What do you intend to do with him? You surely don't mean to put him in jail, do you? That's exactly what I aim to do. <laughs> well, I admire the gesture, but I warn you, that little weasel won't stay there long. Do you know him? Well, I ought to. I'm the judge here. But I never get a chance to try the men I'd like to. And Monty Burns here is one of them. What's your name, young fellow? Bill Breen. Judge Gary. Glad to know you, Judge. I want to see the look on the sheriff's face when you hand Monty over to him. This fellow just threw a knife at me, and that's attempted murder in any man's town, even in Deadwood. Slap some iodine on him and lock him up. Stuart, you know what it'll get you. Are you going to lock him up, or do I have to? Why can't you convict any of these men? Aren't you a federal judge? The sheriff makes sure that I never get the evidence. They're afraid to harm a federal judge for fear it'll bring in the troops. But my court is just a mockery. Is there somebody in town who can do something about that? Well, there's the Civic League. I've talked to them, but nothing happens. So maybe we can do something about it, Judge. Well, I wish you luck, Brady. Thanks. Thanks for the Civic League. As you know, the Seth Nelson store pizza compete last night. I found the way he was undercutting my prices at the Emporium. So under our agreement, we owe Ripper $2,500 for relieving us of Belden's competition. $2,500? But Seth Belden wasn't doing that much business. Ripper's cost us a lot more than we expected in the beginning. Mr. Stark, will you please collect the money from the gentleman? You got no ticket paying, Ripper. Considering he and his men knocked over 32 miners last month. For a total of $26,000, which we took a 50-50 split for spotting the prospect in our business establishment. I'd like to take a look at those figures. They look all right. I never swore I spotted more than 32 prospects in my store alone. You can't expect Ripper to get them all. And when you figure that you doubled your profit by selling those fool miners their outfits and then collected their take, Ripper's doing plenty. Maybe so. That medicine show gunman Brady brought in Monty here. Judge Gary was with him and I had to lock him up for a few minutes. What do you want me to do with him? Do? Nothing, of course. But the, the bail. Don't you think I would have a little bail? Yeah, mighty little. Here's a dollar. Buy yourself a drink. What happened? I missed him and he got me in the arm. He squeezed lightning with a gun. Nothing to worry about, gentlemen. <laughs> this Bill Brady seems to be pretty tough, but we'll take care of him. Well, I think the main business of the meeting's been attended to. Shall we adjourn to my bar? to Ripper and tell him to see me. something for you, Gabby. Sure to be a bill. I never got anything else from my whole life. Why don't you open it? It's been getting along all right for seven months. No need to bother it now. I met Judge Gary today, Clem. He claims he can do something if we give him the right kind of evidence. But that's hard to get. It might not be if we can find out why Ripper's been keeping the folks from starting up in business. Well, I've always said he was doing it for that civic league. But Ted Carver always writes in his paper that the Civic League is for law and order. But maybe Ted Carver's been fooled. That league is made up of all the big businessmen in Deadwood. Maybe they're trying to kill off competition. You notice they never invited Seth Belden to join them. 
And none of the rest of them newcomers in Deadwood. If they were honest, a fellow like Jake Marvel couldn't belong to them. Why, it's as plain as day. Ripper works for Marvel. Marvel works for the Civic League. Sheriff works for all of them. What you fellas have been needing is somebody to figure these things out for you. That's right. And do something about it. You're darn stupid. We've been thinking we need someone to show us how to clean up Deadwood so we can go back there again. Well, of course, I didn't mean to him. <laughs> so we're asking you, Bill, if you'll take the job. Thanks. I'll do what I can, but I can't do it here. Hey, Gabby, I just found out today that the sheriff can't keep us from putting on her show. That is, if we stay on the outside of the city limits. Well, let's go down tomorrow, set up in business right on the edge of the town. Yeah, what about Ripper? Won't he be shooting us up? Ripper? Eh, you just leave Ripper to me. That is, Bill and me. Sundown on the rangeland, and we're heading down the trail. Get Isn't that heavy business is booming, Deadwood? This is nearly all that's left. While you're telling that, I'll mix up another batch. That is, if I ain't all out of rattlesnake juice. <laughs> on the rangeland, and the herd is looking frail. Hear that maverick ball, you'll be missing his small night. Give me that letter. Anybody thinks we're going to pay him anything, we might as well find out who it is. Jogging across the plain. To the creaking of the saddle and the rattle and rain. It's on the last one. Oh, don't bother me with such trivial matters. Read that. Read it. Read what it says. I don't think it says what I think it says. Please be advised that from the estate of your Uncle Marmaduke W. Blackstone, deceased, you have been willed a sum of $36,000. Read that last part again. $36,000. That's what I thought it said. Three, six, oh, oh, oh. This money will be forwarded upon your order. What are you going to do? Telegraph office in town, is it? I'll wire first thing in the morning, then send it to the bank. <gasps> oh, we'll take it. Get along, get along, get along, old pal, down the train. All right, Francis, it's your turn to sing. Sing? I'm going to do more than sing. Something I can do for you, sir? This is no minor transaction. I should like to see the president. I'm the president. Oh. Well, I'm Blackstone, Professor Mortimer Blackstone. I'm expecting some money by wire from New York. Can you get here? I'm very glad to know you, Professor. Yes, it came a half hour ago. I have the confirmation here. Rather a large amount. A mere trifle. I'll take it in $1,000 bills and some small kids. calls for thousand dollar bills, but I think I can find enough to cover this amount. Just a moment, please. There you are. I have it up. Hmm. Issued by the Third Avenue Bank in New York, eh? Nice little city, New York. Got a fine zoo there. You don't mind my saying so, that's a lot of money to carry around this town. I'd be glad to keep it on deposit here for you. No, oh, think nothing of it. Why, I've been taking care of large sums all my life. Besides, I've got a lady here. Why, my dear child, a few paltry dollars mean nothing to the Blackstone family. 
Oh. You ain't never had no fancy clothes like them yourself. Oh, think nothing of it, Papa. A few paltry dollars mean nothing to the Blackstone family. <laughs> I was going to be an opera singer and swarm before the crown heads of Europe. I get aboard six elephants, four giraffes, a gorilla, and... I heard about your robbery. I can't tell you how sorry I am. This is what we've been up against for years. Well, I'll write another editorial. I might as well write them in water for all the good they do. If Jake Marvel's a man Ripper works for, he must bank a lot more money than any theater owner has a right to. Are you hinting me something? If we found up $35,000 entered at the bank in Jake Marvel's name, wouldn't that be enough evidence for Judge Gary to act? We saw that, but... Well, we tried to get a court order to check a lot of those accounts, but the judge can't issue one without more evidence. Then why don't we break into the bank and take a look for ourselves? I suppose that would be technically a criminal act, but we can't think about that now. It's just what the judge has been waiting for. Well, well what are we waiting for? Here it is. This way, Gabby. It's your only chance. Coming out the front. Mesquite Bush got away. I know what's going to happen before it even begins. And you two fools can't carry out a simple order. Wait here. Well, we couldn't use the law against Bill Brady before, but we can now. Get a warrant out for that medicine show, Bunch. And deputize the Ripper here and all his men. We're gonna give that sniveling judge some men to hang that he ain't been expecting. Where's Andy? Sheriff Jordan shot him. I reckon we're all outlaws now, Clem. Well, what'd you find out? We got the book, but we haven't had a chance to read it yet. Let's see now. M for Marvel. Oh, yeah, here he is. Marvel, J. Deposits this week, $613.22. Withdrawals, $521. Present balance, $1,635.24. That don't sound like much for Marvel. Oh, anybody running a big theater and bar? Charging the kind of prices he does. He ain't depositing my $35,000. Well, maybe Marvel ain't back a ripper after all. Well, I'm betting he is. A man like that might figure he'd have to get out of Deadwood in a hurry. You mean he sends his money, I mean, my money outside? He could send it on that treasure coast to Cheyenne, Denver, or any place. Ain't that a bum, hideous thought? My money's already in Cheyenne or even Chicago. It can't be, Gabby. That treasure coach only goes out once a week. And it doesn't leave again until tomorrow. Then Jake Marble must have my money around somewhere. Yeah, but he ain't gonna keep it around where we can get out of the left coat, please. I can identify it, too. Them's the only $1,000 bills around. And the bank would have the numbers. That'd sure be evidence to Judge Gary. I guess no one could stick up that coat. Not with all them guards inside where you can't get at them. Hey, Gabby. Remember all that experiment you were telling me about? I'll never forget it. You're right, Bill. That coat is plumb unrobable. Now that you remind me, 
I sure come across some mighty strange things when I was inventing my elixir. What are you two driving at? Things are bad enough now without you getting yourself shot or put in jail. Why, daughter, ain't we just been saying it can't be done? Well, I guess I'll adjourn to my laboratory. I just feel like doing a little experiment. If there had been another press in town, I could have refused the business. I can't understand it. Sheriff Jordan's never around when he's needed. How he managed to be on hand when the boys were leaving the Just bank... bad luck. And the killing of poor Andy Baker gives them proof that the Laramie Gap gang are outlaws. And Bill wanted to settle in good for Linda. Are you sorry for his sake alone? I thought perhaps you were one of the reasons Bill wanted to stay. Of course not. I hardly knew him. I'm glad to hear that. You must know how I feel about you, Linda. Although I suppose this isn't quite the place for what I was about to say. Then maybe you'd better wait, Ted. Bank, New York. Here it is. This don't say Jake Marble. C.O. Door Carver, First National Bank, Chicago, Illinois. Why, it ain't only incredible, it's downright unbelievable. Theodore Carver. That's bound to be Ted Carver, no two ways about it. How much is there? 12,000 even. Then we are getting it all back after all. Here's Jake Marble. Here's five more of your thousand dollar bills, Gabby. And signs of the Drover's Bank and shy. Maybe Marvel is just using Ted Carver's name. Then how would Marvel send some of it in his own name, too? It doesn't make sense. Unless Carver's really the man behind all this. But what about Linda? He worked for Carver. I'll never believe she's mixed up in it. Here's three more. Hey, they're three in all six of these envelopes. That makes the other 18,000, Gabby. Michael Barton. Say, doesn't he run the livery stable? Yeah, and here's Richard Sneed, owner of the general store. And B.L. Stark. And Harold Ewell. Why, he's the express agent. And Peter Wilson. Say, that's the Civic League. All these fellas belong to it. We've got some tall things to do, and we can't do it here. Let's head for the gap. Hey, 
I just got a message from Rock Point Station. That gang from Larry McGabb just held up the gold coast. Bill Brady was with him. Where's the sheriff? Let's get up a posse. The sheriff can't handle this. We will. What? Bill Brady wouldn't do a thing like that. Coast guards couldn't have been mistaken about who held him up. Thanks, Joe. I'll get an extra out right away. I know it's bad for you, Linda. You thought a lot of Bill Brady. He did mean a lot to me, but I realize now I really never knew very much about him. Well, we've got to get out an extra. I know. But the minute it's in type, I'm going to the gas. But Brady's probably left the country. Maybe he has. But if he's still there, I'm going to see him. We just got another message at the express office. None of the bullion was taken, just the currency. Whose currency? Every packet that contained one of those thousand dollar bills. That's clear now. Too clear. Is it a work? Work fast. Where are the others? They're guarding the pass. We're expecting the posse to attack. I was afraid you might have left. Not me. Didn't I tell you once that I understand dead wood? Yes, but you didn't say anything about robbing stagecoaches. Was that your idea? It sure was, and it worked like a charm. But why? We're getting evidence for Judge Jerry. You mean you didn't take anything? Nothing but the professor's money. And there certainly ain't no claim to take back what's yours. Then you got the evidence for the judge? We got the money, all right. And it was under Jake Marvel's name? It's hard to say, Linda, knowing how you feel about him. But an even dozen of Dad's bills were found consigned under Ted Carver's name. Ted Carver? You don't mean... We don't think you've got anything to do with it. We know you only work for him. You don't believe it. You don't think Ted's a thief. Well, he had the money. Somebody must be using his name. Ted's been fighting this sort of thing ever since he came here. It looked that way, except in there's a skunk in the chicken coop. Do you remember when we decided to break into the bank? The sheriff and Ripper come along just to pat as you please. The only man that could have tipped him off was Ted Carver. He was there when we planned the whole thing. Yeah, but he wasn't around when we figured out that stage hold up. And it come off slicker than a weasel. But you might as well accuse me. I was with you when you decided to break into the bank. I thought you had become a real bandit and I was wrong. Maybe you're making the same mistake about Ted Carver. Maybe. Will you do us a favor? Of course. Gabby? I don't think we ought to risk keeping your money around here. Huh? Young fella, are you even toying with some pernicious idea that I should let that $35,000 out of my hands? It's not only money, it's evidence. If a party should break in here and take it away from us, everything would be wasted. I think Bill's right, Professor. And if he is right, which I ain't admitting, none whatsoever. Where is he going to put my money that's safer than here, where it belongs? I figured to have Linda take it to Judge Gary. That is, if you're willing to risk it. Then no matter what happens, the judge got the goods on him. That's right. He's the only one who can use that evidence. And the quicker we get it to him, the better. Well, daughter, it was nice while we had it. Here it is, in the same express company envelope them skunks shipped it in, endorsed by him to their banks all over the country. And don't forget, young lady, you're carrying a whole dad blame circus there. You better hurry on in. And as soon as it gets dark enough for me to slip into town, I'll get in touch with Judge Gary. If that posse don't get here first to sort of occupy your time. What'd you find out? Well, in the first place, I found a new entrance to the gap straight across from Indian Rock. A hidden opening in the cliff. Hmm. Well, never mind that now. What about the girl? Well, I followed her to the cab. She went into the cabin. A few minutes later, when she rode away, I followed her until she got to the judge's house. Then I came here. You never got close enough to hear anything? No, a guard post. I, I was afraid... You'd be afraid to get close to a rabbit. How do you do, Judge? How do you do? Linda, I heard you were here. I've been worried about you. What'd you find out at the gap? Mm. They denied having anything to do with the stage holdup. And Bill Brady, was he there? He must have found some sort of evidence, otherwise he wouldn't be here. Linda couldn't find out anything. That's what she came here to tell me. 
Maybe they were lying to me. I don't know what to think. This is a great disappointment to me. I had hoped to accomplish something at last. Well, there's still a paper to get out, you know. I'm going to the telegraph office and wire Fort Smiley for a troop of cavalry. This money is sufficient evidence for me to declare Deadwood under martial law and clean it up for good and all. Either Bill Brady lied to Linda or she and the judge are lying to me. The judge has got that money, we've got to get it, and that's your job. Mine? I don't like messing with the government. I said get it. duty to inform you that I've discovered a back entrance into Laramie Gap. Back entrance? I've been wondering I suggest that while part of your posse keep those outlaws busy at the Gap itself, you and a few of your men attack them from the rear. Well, Carver, the way your paper's been running me down, I didn't expect any help from you. Well, I admit that my editorial policy's been against you, but that was before I discovered that Bill Brady and his gang were the real troublemakers. Now I'm as anxious as anyone to see them caught. That's fine. With your paper's support, we can do a lot around here. Well, just so long as it's honest. Now, if you're ready, I'll lead you into the back entrance to the gap. But I... Hello, Linda. Now that you've been at the scene of the murders, I want you to check that story I wrote. Old Harry's got it set up in type. So you know about the back way? Of course. I would have kept it to myself if those friends of yours hadn't betrayed my confidence by robbing the treasure coast. Betrayed your confidence? You know why they did it. You know they aren't thieves. Harry! What's the matter? We're locked in. Have you a key? Why, no. Let Evidence to Carver, he's completely in the clear. Uh, all right, I've seen you, Bill. Okay. See Monty Burns? Monty Burns? 
Funny person. He's dead on a macro. Dead? Who killed him? That Laramie Gap bunch, I guess. Say, ain't you? Hey! about sunrise. We'll start in when we hear you shooting. Try to keep scattered out. But the sheriff's gang. We don't want no innocent blood on our hands. I can't see nothing but innocent blood to show that. Only guilty blood seems to be keeping the rear. That's Engine Rock. So that must be the place over there. Monty said it was right across. Thank you. 
This district's under martial law. You're under arrest. Where's Bill Brady? Right here, Judge. Bill! Are you all right, Bill? I'm a lot better off than Carver. Oh, you got him, eh? Hello, Linda. Carver's lying right over there, and I'm betting he's got the money. How'd you fellas get here? They came from Fort Smiley and answered to my wire. And I brought them out as fast as I could. What about Gabby and the others? Gabby and his daughter are on their way over here. Clem and his bunch, along with the posse that was trying to capture them, are under arrest. That's the only way we can stop the battle. Let's go and see what we can find on Carver, Lieutenant. Yeah, what you need is some of my elixir. Why, it makes bullets plumb beneficial. Are you sure it'll work? Sure. Certainly I'm sure. Why, it is elixir of money. Just between you and me, in this particular case, I figure maybe the elixir could use a little help. I reckon I can leave that to you, huh? <laughs> I think you can release the Larry McGaff people now, Lieutenant. I just took this off ex-Sheriff Jordan, and I don't think we'll have any trouble getting the voters of Deadwood to make it legal. Thanks, Jed. Looks like I'm going to be settled down for bear. You think you're going to like it? 